something just a little bit different. Ghost stories, real ones, from all of you, all night long. I've been doing this on uh, Ghost to Ghost AM. I've been doing this for uh, years and years and years at Halloween. Now, on the West Coast or Hawaii, you're probably saying this is not yet Halloween. The points eastward are well aware it is now Halloween. The bulk of the program in whatever time zone you reside, save perhaps Hawaii, will be on Halloween. Now when I do a ghost show, I do a serious ghost show. That's all we talk about, that's all we do is tell ghost stories. Real ghost stories, because ghosts are real. That is my attitude about it, it has been for years. I've heard too many stories to believe otherwise. What creates a ghost? What is a ghost? I don't know. I just know that there really is something out there. And so, as a traditional item on this day of the year, we do nothing but tell ghost stories. And uh, if this is you, we could have a guest. Uh, there are many, many experts out there, people who would like to come on on Halloween. But I don't do that. I restrict it to all of you. And uh, I hope you will respect the fact that what we're looking for are serious and real stories of ghosts. Now, there certainly is something out there. I don't know what creates them. It seems as though, as though um, unsuspected or surprising uh, quick death will cause somebody to stay on. It seems as though unrequited love uh, causes somebody to stay on. And then there are literally myths that seem to continue. And tonight, during the night, we will talk about all of those and more. So that's the agenda tonight. I, I never have had any doubt that those are real. I know they're real after having uh, presided over this program for the last, I don't know how many years, decade plus many now. I know they're real. I guess the question in my mind about ghosts, after doing so many of these and after observing things I have observed, I just came to the conclusion that uh, it obviously is real. There really are ghosts, which means that there is survival of physical death. You know, doing these shows really, it, it scares the hell out of you. After a lot of times it just plain scares the hell out of you. But there is fun in fear, some types of fear. This kind of fear seems to be fun. Well, it's fun in the telling. It's not as much fun in the doing will discover listening throughout the night so let us begin how many of you have ever felt a presence that you could not explain Maybe not a full ghost story, maybe not some of the poltergeists and things that you've heard about so far this morning, things moving through the air, that sort of thing, but a presence. How many times in your life have you felt a presence, yet there was none? Don't you? 
digested baloney or something else. And you dismiss it. It's easier to dismiss because the alternative is a little frightening. Well, I believe that sometimes, even many times, those feelings of a presence are real.
knew it to be a haunted house. Uh, hmm. We went up there and went inside and was messing around, you know, just goofing off doing typical high school guy things. We went ahead, uh, got pretty bored with that. Didn't see anything interesting, so we decided to leave. Well, the house was located out in the country, uh, I guess about six or seven miles from uh, the town I lived in. And we started back into town, and uh, there's a long stretch of road called uh, Piper's Gap Road in that area. We started down the road, and it just got uh, real foggy. Uh, just like it just sat down, you know, and it's real humid back there, so I just, I figured it was just one of them typical things, you know, it got a little bit cool, the clouds came down. And it just lays down, you know. And, and it just laid down on the road. Sure. Well, while we're going down through there, got to going and talking about uh, people that pick up hitchhikers, and the next thing you know, they'll turn over and be talking to them around and they won't be there in the car so we're going down the road and we come up to uh, it's, I wouldn't say a fork in the road I'd say an intersection where another road connected with the road we were on yeah. uh, as we approach it uh, we can just make out a person standing right on the side of the road, right at where the road connects. And he's got his son. Well, we're talking to each other, and I said, you know, why don't we just stop and pick the guy up? And they're like, no, man, don't do it, you know, because we've just been talking about <laughs> picking a pitch out. <laughs> so I said, no, I said, we're going to go ahead and do it. And I was driving. So I pulled the car over. The guy sitting beside me in the passenger seat rolled down the window. Leans out and asks the guy to the ride. Well, he just automatically turned back to me, and I mean, his face was just ashen. I mean, it just went pale. And I leaned down and looked out the passenger window, and he had already asked him if he had wanted a ride. I looked at the guy, the guy was as white as a sheet. And he was still looking down the road in the direction that we had came from. And he didn't move, didn't make any sign that he even knew we were there. And that was, what, nine years ago and it's still, to this day I think about it and it kind of gives me shivers. to the Rockies, you're on the air, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I've been listening, and we've had uh, quite a few incidents happen, and there was one that just happened recently, and um, it really sort of worried me, but um, I had, we'd gone through the hurricane, and I had been up all night, you what, know, going what, to what the is your, wait, Hold on, what is your first name? Sharon. Sharon, and where are you? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. So you've been through a hurricane. Yeah. And so I had laid down finally that morning, you know, to get some sleep. And so I woke up, 
and my bedroom door was shut and all of a sudden I look and it's like I had some clothes hanging on the back of it and somebody was pulling some the dress away from the door like they were looking at it. This one was really strange. And so anyway, uh, later I, I, go, I went to the uh, washroom, I was going to decide to do some clothes and so do some wash and so I opened the washer and there inside the washer was three stems of leathery fur inside my washing machine. Really? And I'm saying, oh my God, then I knew what had happened. My mother was a real dress nut. She used to make us dresses all the time when we were young. Yes. And so she was a fernery. She had started the Leslie firm business. And so anyway, I have her fern here. And so I think it's what she was trying to let me know that it was her that was here with me during the storm. And then another incident, my husband had gone up on the roof after a hurricane one year. And so uh, when he was trying to come back off the roof, the ladder was there, but the ladder kept moving back and forth. And so he couldn't figure out what was making the ladder move. And so anyway, he starts to come down, and he falls backwards. And he hits the tree, and he comes down the concrete, and hits his head, cracks his whole head open. And uh, anyway, he, uh, we end up getting more rescue. He dies on the way to the hospital. So oh my he, God. He's dead for about an hour. He comes back. And anyway, we find out later this girl had come to the house to visit and she brought a friend of hers with her and she had to be from the Cherokee tribe. Anyway, she was psychic. And she said, there's somebody in this house. There's a spirit in this house. And so she goes to start to me and says, was, there was an accident not too long ago. And I said, yeah. Um, Wait a minute, slow down. You don't die. Yeah, he for did. an hour. He was he dead for an hour and he, and he came back. Uh, he was sent back. And no, you, you yeah, he was. They, they verify. I mean, I worked on the radio and said, they were looking off the for the hell. I was in the office. There was mercy. And, and, and Wait, are you patient. saying that he was declared dead? Yeah, he was declared. Yeah, they said the patient just died. And so I went back there and they said he was dead for right at an hour. On the way to the hospital, all the way from up from where we were at, to, uh, uh, they had to go to another place because the storm. They had to go to another place. Well, that, that alone is, is absolutely astounding. Well, I know I talked to a lot of people I know, but anyway, um, anyway, she was telling me. She said, "Well, uh, I'm going to tell you who, who this was uh, or why this accident happened." And she starts to describe this young man and. And she tells us that it was my brother-in-law. He was trying to warn my husband not to kill the ladder. My husband didn't know he put the wrong end of the ladder down. He had to ground it in. Instead of the flat end. Oh. He was trying to warn him not to kill the ladder. And that's why the ladder was shot. Yeah! He said Jim was trying to save his life. That's my brother-in-law. And so anyway, then she says, Paula, he's standing right behind you. Was, we were sitting at the counter in the kitchen and, and the sink and all that's right behind me. And she said, Paul, and she described, she never even knew, she described him to a T. He was standing there making himself coffee. Right behind me. And I went, oh my God. And so then another incident happened with my father-in-law. And my grandchildren were here. And what I'm trying to write, it looks like it was Who's that old man walking across the yard in shed? And so I went, oh my God. So I showed her a picture. I said, is this him? She said, yeah, that was my father-in-law.
East of the Rockies, you're on the air. Welcome. Hi, Art. This is Jamie calling from Houston, Texas. How you doing, Jamie? I'm just fine. I'm a first-time caller, and I want to say that I've personally never seen a ghost. But the story I wanted to tell you has been in the family over 90 years, so I thought I might tell you. It's coming from three generations. You might tell me. Yeah. All right. Well, my grandmother used to tell me, but her grandmother told her when she was a girl, her uncle, her mother's brother, his wife died after they had had a new baby, and he had a little girl that was six years old, right. and then they had a new baby. Well, when he would get the little girl and the baby bedded down at night, you know, there were no electric lights, just old shacks in South Carolina. He would uh, go out late at night, you know, for a couple of hours. You know, but he would leave a fire burning in the fireplace. Sure. Well, one night he went out and he didn't come back. He stayed out a little late and uh, the baby started to cry. And the little girl being six years old, she was afraid because the fire was burning out. She was afraid to get up. So after a while, the baby cried and cried. After a while, she heard this thump and then something came down the fireplace. So the little girl said it looked like a big bird and the bird stood right in front of the fireplace.
first time caller line, uh, Chris in Nebraska. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I wanted to share with you guys a story that uh, kind of spooked the bejesus out of me, but at the same time was kind of a, a relief. I uh, used to be an over-the-road trucker. And I was cruising down I-40 in New Mexico when I uh, got flagged over on the CB with another trucker that they're going to roll over the accident. And uh, uh, all the passengers in the vehicle had been ejected. And, uh, took a long time to get any kind of state patrol or flight for life medics or anything out there. There was a young girl that had gone into shock. I wrapped her up in a blanket and was holding her. And uh, about an hour and 15 minutes later, they finally got there and got the, the major triage taken care of. My God, that is a long time. It, it, was, it was a rough go. But uh, when they finally came up and to take the girl from me, they uh, had told me that she'd expired, she, she'd passed on, and uh, I, I never knew it, and uh, so I was kind of a devastating thing for me, I avoided that at uh, I-40 interstate, ran many miles out of my way just to stay out of there for a long time. in a hurry when I come out of California and I uh, decided I had to run I-40 and uh, just as I passed that mile marker where that accident had happened my little dog has been running with me forever never messed in a truck before uh, relieved himself in my passenger seat And went yipping and screaming into the back of the sleeper. And uh, I looked into the back of the sleeper to see what was wrong with him. And he was down there cowered under the under my bunk. And as I looked back to the road, I noticed that there was a young girl sitting in the passenger seat of my truck. But she was, uh, you know, very, I mean, ghostly, I guess. Uh, you can kind of see through her. I can see one door on the other side through her. And uh, she just looked at me and she smiled. And in a very, very soft voice, she said, thank you and uh, I'm okay. And she was gone. I pulled over and walked around the truck for a long, long time before I got back in it. But, um, you know, it was, like I said, it was the most terrifying experience of my life and probably the most satisfying, you know, it was just something inner in the inside that really settled. inside that it's really settled in inside that it's really settled satisfying you know it's just something